This video is going to be about the subject of wonk. And this is a funny little term uh, that basically describes objects that look a little bit weird. The way to do this, and we're going to start really simple with just a box, is your first step is to go with the shape. This box has a little lid. And that's step one. Step two is to just familiarize yourself with the basic form of this box. Okay, so we've got our basic box with the lid. Now, step three is where the sort of fun happens. You, you can do this in one of two ways. One way is by shape. You can start with this basic shape, and you can modify that shape. Right? You can make it flare out. You can make it flare in. Um, you can make it bulgy. You can make it bulgy on the sides and not the top. You can just sort of make it flare. And what you do from there is decide whether this flare is going to be on both sides or one side. So your form could be a basic box form like this. And your wonk could go in this direction only, right? So your new, your new form would be this sort of thing. Right? It could go in all directions. Like you could start with the box and you could bend that out in every single direction. Right? So your new corners would bulge in every which way. We add like a little center line that can help us understand that, right? So instead of having a defined corner, you have a rounded corner. Switch to the pencil and keep going with this. Okay, so the way I like to think of it is you can use C curves, you can use S curves, or anything else that you want to come up with. So C curves can go in or out. So you can make a box that goes in, you can make a box that goes out. Or actually out should go that way, right? Or that way, or both, right? Should probably go both so that you can round it out properly. And you can do S curves, right? So if you do S curves, you can say S curve S curve, S curve, S, S curve, S curve, S curve, S curve, S curve, right? So your box can be structured around different types of curves. Okay? The other thing you can think about are just your typical sort of entertainment industry things. Like you can have a box be super tall, you can have the box bulge out, or just be sort of normal, right? You can also exaggerate that tall. 
that tall one by making it super skinny, right? It can be tall and skinny. Like you take the box and stretch it out like that. So think of like motions and things that you wanna that you want to have. Let's say you take a basic cylinder, like a cup or like a trash can or something like that, and you want to add wonk to that trash can. You can change how the sides wonk, but any cylindrical object, or really most objects, they have an axis. So you can wonk the axis, right? Like I can take the axis, boom, move it. I can follow that axis with the sides. If I need to, I can cross that axis and add my ellipse to define it there. So I can add wonk by just saying, well, the axis shift. I can also keep the axis straight and I can add C curves, S curves, and so on, right? And then you can you can do all of this together. Like you can say, well, I want to do an axis wonk and I want to do S curves. So I want to go boom, 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 boom. And then when you're here, you can wrap a couple of lines around to help you understand the form, right? So this is kind of like your basic way of constructing these things. And your axis, this is basically a C axis. You can use an S curve axis as well. So you can take the bottom of this thing right here, run things parallel to the axis, and do it that way. So you have a bunch of options. And looking at the modern entertainment industry will give you a bunch of ideas of how to do this. The next thing is how to take an object and make the object kind of more specific. So I'll just use a reference from this, um, this signal generator. So what I do first is draw the flat shape, right? It's a box. So it has a very simple shape. It has a handle. A little dimension to the handle. Around about a third, it has its needle and diagram. There's a little dial right here. The big old needle. Then over here, there's another dial. There's a small little indicator, another small little indicator over here. There's a dial just off center here. There's another dial here. Now what I can do, anytime that I want to plot something in perspective, I can take my basic rectangle, subdivide it with the X method, find the halfway points. If I need to further subdivide, I can do that again. Right? So I can break this down into a grid really quickly, and then I can project it into perspective, right? Boom, 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 across, boom, across, boom, across. Then this doesn't have to be a perfect plane. This can also be imperfect. It can be wonky, right? So I can go boom, 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 then I can go boom, 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 move my center line down a little bit, boom, 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 cross, Boom, cross, or however this needs to go, right? Maybe that needs to flare up instead. So now I can I can plot this on a totally different plane 
such that it makes a little more sense for doing wonk, right? And then I can take this, and I can plot it, and translate it, right? Okay, so now I know where all of these things are, right? I'll probably shift this thing over just a bit to dead center. So I can take, take this shape and translate it over, right? So I've done this. So on, if I want to do like a more flat wonk thing, I can go here, here. I know that I'm going to go here, here, the dial is going to be here, I have another dial off center here, one here, and one here. And then I know that my arc is going to go here, over, and across, and I know my handle is going to go somewhere up here. Okay, then I can do it on this curved surface as well. I can go boom, 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 boom. Then I can do my little arc, boom, boom, handle, wherever the handle needs to go. Okay. So this is your basic idea of how to base, have how to translate something over. I can go basic box form, pretty shallow. Okay, and I can decide how I want this to be wonky. I kind of like the idea that it that it kind of tilted or something like that, or maybe does maybe it does this sort of thing. It comes out. Just sort of sits funky on the ground. It still sits on the ground. Whenever I do this stuff, I like to start with this the single um, normal box and then wonk the wonk the box. You might just go straight towards the wonky version. So we can then go. Here's our halfway point. We can go X, X, through, through, X, through, X, straight through, straight through, right? Then we can start translating back again. We can go boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Then we got our little arc. Boom, boom. And we have our needle. And our needle this time is going to bend. And that's probably going to be like the funniest part is that the needle is like, is going to be bent. Right? Because a needle would need to be straight to be able to like work. And if, it, and if it's bent, it's going to like hit this object, which is kind of the funny thing about wonk. And then up here on the top, I know that on the, the top is centered as well. So I can go on that top center, find my center line. And then I know basically where this handle is going to go. It's going to go somewhere like right about here. So I can pull the handle up and figure that, figure that out, where that's going to go. So this is kind of just the plotting point. Now, if I want these details on here to be kind of wonky, I can do that too. Like, this is the basic, like, shape of one of these dials. It's a hexagon, but it curves inward at each hexagonal point, and then they connect with arcs out, like that. Like, I'm sure this is a standard dial that you've seen like a million times before. So it kind of just goes in, out, and out, and out. Boom. Like that. 
Now, if I want that to be wonky, I need to exaggerate something about it. So I can take away or add detail if I want. Like I could turn this into a square dial and I could just go boom, 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 and kind of keep the theme of it. But that's funnier in some ways because dials aren't usually square. I'll keep that circle in there to make it more understandable. But then because it's square, this is also easier to translate into dimensionality, right? So it's going to wind up being plotted onto here in some way sort of like this. Right? So then I can go ahead and plot this back into this into this box and then I can decide well this handle is not very wonky and not very interesting so I can redesign the detail of it like the basic handle shape is something sort of like this which is like very standard and handily um, but that's kind of boring so maybe I want the handle to be asymmetrical maybe it goes like this right? Maybe it flares out, goes up really big, flares back. Maybe I flare it in, flare it in there, so that when I put it onto this object, it kind of has a totally different effect. It does something like that. That's more interesting, right? So go through and redesign everything about the object as well as the object itself, and you're gonna have a lot of fun. Now there's certain things about the, this particular um, signal generator that are interesting like it has curved sides and the curve on it is actually pretty small the transitions really quick so what I want to do when I go to the wonky object is exaggerate that right make it really big so that that buys me the ability to make it look funnier and whenever you do these transitions Remember, if you're drawing a standard box form, you want this transition. You transition, transition, you have your box form. But then, because there's no single edge, you have to put like two edges on it at the beginning and end of that transition, so you know where that happens. Um, and I do this kind of soft. I, don't, I wouldn't want to do this because that kind of like kills the dimension and makes me think there's a hard edge there. When you go to do this, this full drawing, Got your box, your wonky stuff, got your X method you can use to subdivide everything. I put the center kind of too far there. I know the center should go back here a little more. So if you've done this a bunch, you don't really have to subdivide as carefully or even subdivide at all because it's about wonky objects anyway. So. I can then start um, start translating some stuff. I think I'm going to move the location of this more towards the middle of here, and I'm going to do this um, the wonky version that we set up for this guy right here. So we've got boom, 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 boom. Then we're going to run it back in space. Curve it around, boom. Curve it around, boom. Give it a side. Remember, it's a dial, so it needs that circle to make sense. Okay. And I made this an extra, extra deep one just because that's funny. Then I need. I didn't redesign the needle. The needle itself was kind of this sort of thing with a little center line in it. Um, that's kind of not that interesting. Um, maybe I'll do like a needle like this or something. So it's more like needly and has the same sort of C-shaped wonk as the rest of the thing. So I can take the needle. I know the needle is going to go up here. Maybe the needle goes like really, really far. Maybe the needle even points up and over it. That would be funniest, right? So I'll run the needle down. Give it the C-shaped wonk. 
layer it out, run it there, layer it out. So I made this like giant needle, which is really funny and stupid. Then to make it more interesting, I can give it a little bit of a shadow under there to make sure that there's some depth. Give it a little bit of shadow under there, make sure there's some depth. Then I'm going to come back because I haven't done my arc yet. Make my arc really big. It's a transparent needle in the object, so I can just run with that. And then I didn't really design like the dials. They're just sort of that sort of dial. So I can change that dial if I want or just keep it the same. It doesn't really matter. Um, but what I can do is just kind of simply flare stuff. Boom, boom. I have this little indicator that sort of flares out. Maybe it has an indicator light on it or some threads. Maybe this indicator goes the other direction. It's just sort of silly. Then we have an off-center dial right here. So we've got a dial. Then I'm gonna, so what I did there is I, I'm gonna build this forward. So I started on the back plane and then I'm gonna build it up. Dial, boom. And then I'm gonna build that up a little more. Up, out, up, out. Boom. Okay. So I give it a standard dial form. And then give it a little shadow. Then I've got a couple more dials to do. Dial. Bring the dial up. So this one went in that direction. This one I'm going to go in a different direction. Because the dial should all be turned differently, right? Then I need to put one more dial back here. And because this one came out, I, if I can sneak a little overlap in there, that would be fantastic. Because overlap buys me depth, right? Overlap the dial just slightly. Don't make it a tangent, right? If this, if this arc of the dial intersects with this arc, I've created a tangent, it kills some depth. So I want to avoid that, right? And I can change the, the angle of the dial again, build it up. There, I've got an uh, interesting dial. I can do a little shadow work to differentiate it. Then what would be really cool is if I could get this big enough, enlarge it, so that I can overlap the outside edge. That's more interesting. I can also pull the inside edge in there last minute. And then remember, I'm going to arc this, do a quick transition, right? So that now I'm adding like this, this corporate curve to the wonk. And remember, I have to have two edges. Whenever I do this, okay. So now this object is developing nicely, um, and it's kind of like very boxy, understandable. I can do little things, like instead of having it going straight across, I can do a slight inward, downward C curve, just to be a little like subtle and ridiculous about it, because I kind of did that anyway on the back, so I might as well pull that right here. I can do that on the bottom as well. And now any little details that I need, I can kind of, um, I can kind of throw in there. Like I might need to spend a little more time developing this bit I 
Maybe this has like a different tone behind it or something. Maybe it has like subdivisions every once in a while. And so on. Oh, there's a little um, light right here, which is a little spherical doodad. So it comes out, has its little thing going on. And then, you know, I can go through, I can add things like, um, you know, the, the screws that hold the object together. And if I increase the size of them, that's going to make them easier to draw. And just bring this like into a funnier situation because it's, you know, partly real, partly not real. And then I can go through and I can do some stuff with like with some lighting, right? Um, generally, 45 degree lighting works better. So what I want to do is kind of cast the light so that I get a good shadow right here. And I'm going to have a shadow core at this turn. Because I need to indicate that turn well. And then I'm going to have another like little bit of a turning edge, but not anything super dark right here. Maybe the top can have like a half tone to it. And I can include like a little turning edge to make this go back over here. And then I need to hold this back edge. So I need to bump up with a little slight line there. And then on the bottom, I can include a dark line down here. And then it's going to get heavy here because this is going to sit on a flat ground. So that's a little bit of a shadow peeking in under there. I can bring a little bit of shadow in over here. Right? To start to indicate that this thing has a shadow. And if I know where the back corner is, I can bring the shadow out over here even. And just start to indicate that this is in a grounded space. And then I can bump up the shadows within the objects, right? So this form has a little shadow here. The side of this guy has a shadow. And then I'm losing the edge, so I can come back and I can pull the edge out. And I can bump up some line weight here and there to make things make sense. Give this guy a little bit of shadow on the object itself as well. I can give each little bit a slightly different emphasis. I want to be sure that this object is differentiated so I can use a little bit of heavy line work to kind of make sure that that happens. Oh, and I forgot to do the, the handle. The handle is like the one of the biggest parts of it. So the handle, I can base, I can translate that by just kind of drawing back to front. So I can take my little wonky handle idea, run it up, run it back down, hit. Then I can finish the shape off. And I can give it a little bit of form. And make sure that this has a nice, even, nice, perfect shadow side. 
I'm gonna go pretty heavy because this is gonna be like a black handle. So the shadow side is gonna be pretty dark. And then the front side is gonna have the tone on it. And even though I did this last, it doesn't really matter that you see a couple lines through it. So it winds up, this winds up getting more emphasis than anything else. So now we're really done. We've got all the parts, we've got the handle. Um, it's a fun, wonky object.